can your best self play poker at all? What obligation do we have to speak up to help enforce the rules? Poker has this giant landmass of ethically gray behavior. One of our viewers has sent in a great topic. Mm -hmm. David Lutzinger asked about the ethics of playing poker. I, I think there's two components of ethics that are somewhat distinct, and we should talk about each of them separately. Okay. The first one is, is it okay to play poker, or can your best self play poker at all right. for, for real money? Does it, does it like bring you down below your own ethical bar? May I ask yourself, am I right? Am I wrong? And then the other is we sort of stipulate that you have found comfort in that space, uh -huh. and there you are sitting at the table. How do you be that best self, right. given that you are sitting at a poker table? Well, there's another thing we're going to talk about sure. today, Lee, which is what to do at the table when you see something wrong. What obligation do we have to speak up to help enforce the rules or when we see something ethically wrong. And this is something you and I have talked about. Right. And we have some for disagreements sure. on yes, that. Yes, for sure. So we're going to go into that today, too. Let's go with the big one first. OK. Can a person who cares about their own ethical self mm -hmm. play poker for real money? Yeah. You want to give it a shot? Sure. Um, I've thought about this a ton and talked to people about it and written about it. And lived it uh, as a pro. And lived it, right. I mean, it's a really, really tough situation where you know your opponents are suffering terribly, financial strain, yet you're trying to take every last dollar you can and kick them out the door. We're not the first to bring this up. Honestly, we know there's going to be people that, we, that are coming into the room. Right. And for one reason or another, it's like, it's obvious. Yeah. That that guy is not going to be a winning player for whatever reason. Right. You just know that this guy is losing money he can't afford yeah. to lose at the poker table. And right. how, how do you deal with that? Like, what's your, where are you with this? Well, I came to be fine with it. Um, but I think everyone has to, or else you go insane. You may say to yourself, my God, what have I done? You either have to find some way to, to justify it or rationalize it or else quit playing poker. But I actually quickly got to the point where I was just like, you know, I mean, this is war, right? They're taking my money. I'm taking their money. Mm -hmm. I've had plenty of times, even when I was a winning player, when I had terrible losing streaks, right. nobody was feeling sorry for me. Right. You know, poker is one of the most lone wolf activities there is. These are all little bits and pieces of how I came to rationalize it and come to peace with it way back in the 90s. Right. Um, you know, like there would be guys in the game that, say, a cab driver. Mm -hmm. You know, he goes out and works all day, he makes 40 bucks, and he comes in and blows his 40 bucks every right. single day. Right. Right. And I had to be okay with that. One way you could look at it is, hey, we're all big boys and girls here. Nobody put a gun to your head to force you to walk into the casino and sit down at the poker table. Right. So let's let everybody, kind of the, the libertarian view, if you will, yeah. everybody is welcome to spend their money as they see fit. Another way you could do it is, let's say that there's somebody at the table who you know, for whatever reason, is playing with money they can't afford, mm -hmm. is losing more than they should, you know, maybe it's breaking up their family. You might say, do you know what, I just don't feel comfortable sitting at the table with that person. I'm going to get up and leave the table. The ultimate is to say, I don't feel comfortable playing poker for real money because it's highly likely that somebody at the table might fit that profile. It's like, I don't want to even go into the guessing game about who can afford and who mm -hmm. can't afford. To do that, I'm, I'm consciously putting my thoughts into evaluating a total stranger's life. I often wonder what it is she's feeling. Has he ever heard a word I said? But this is the point of how I've gotten to where none of that bothers me, mm -hmm. is I consciously stop caring at all about my opponents, about where their money comes from, mm -hmm. how much they have, why they play poker. Right. For some people, it is their escape, it is their drug. Even mm -hmm. though they're losing, it, that's better than their home life. Right. 
You know what I mean? I just, I just quit judging all of that. And right. this could be part of my defense mechanism of how I was able to put myself in that environment every day for 15 years mm -hmm. without feeling guilty and bad right. about it. So I think the answer to our first question is you're going to have to find a place and decide that you can take your best self into the casino, mm -hmm. sit down at the poker table and play. And if you decide that you can't, that's fine. So I wrote an article a while back called Reconciling Buddhistic Practice with Poker. Okay. Okay, so a lot of my blah blah has to do with meditation and you know, you know sitting up straight um and i have come to truly believe that you can go to war at the poker table and kind of take the noble warrior attitude mm -hmm. where you have absolute respect for every opponent even even if you don't like them mm -hmm. even if you don't approve of of them you still respect them as a fellow warrior while the contest is going on And I do believe that it's possible to bring an attitude of harmlessness, if you can imagine that. That's a key Buddhist word. Right. But I do believe it's possible to bring an attitude of harmlessness to the poker table right. in the same way that you can almost have that attitude, believe it or not, mm -hmm. as a boxer or whatever. It's like you're there to go to war. You're go to, to engage. Mm -hmm. But you're not really trying to hurt that person. Right. You're not trying to hurt that person. You're just trying to win the war that we've all agreed to fight. Right. And I do believe that that can be done in a way where the attitude you bring and the mood that you bring to the table is positive and at, or at the very least not harmful right. to the psyche of the people around yes. you. Yes. Here's one that comes up at the table all the time. Well, you're sitting next to a guy, and when he looks at his hand, he doesn't hide him very well. And it, you know, if you go like this, you could actually see his whole card. What do you do then? My response, mm -hmm. and it's just my response, mm -hmm. is the first time I will tell him. I'll say, excuse me, sir, you're flashing your whole cards to me as you look at them. Mm -hmm. You need to do a better job of covering with your hands. Right, right. And it's like, that's fair warning. And after yeah. that, I, I won't purposely look. Right. But if I get a glimpse, I'm like, I'm sorry, that was, that was your mistake in the information war. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I just won that battle. Because on every one of these, I've been through stages. Mm -hmm. You know, I used to do it one way, then another way, then another way. In the early days, I was like, if I could look at a guy's hand, I'm going to look at it. Right. I'm never going to tell him. Right. Are you kidding me? I mean, at that time, I would, if you would have said to me, oh, that's unethical, I would have said, you're ridiculous. Okay. I truly would have felt that. This was like 30 years ago. <laughs> okay. No, really. I mean, it's like it's war. The guy shows me his hand. It's his problem, right? Then I got to the point where I did exactly what you did. I would be like, uh, ma'am, I can see your cards. Just letting you know. And they're like, oh, okay, thank you. And then they're a little more careful. Right. Now what I do is, is I don't want to talk to anybody and criticize them or correct them on anything ever. So I just don't look, okay. believe it or not. I just don't look when I could. And yeah. then problem solved. My ethics are intact. I don't have to talk to anybody. When I have nothing to say, my lips are sealed. <laughs> <laughs> Is it ethical to slow roll somebody if you know it's going to tilt them and put them off their game? The only reason anyone ever slow rolls someone mm -hmm. is with the intention of causing pain. That's the only reason they're doing. Okay, so the reason people intentionally cause pain is because they're experiencing their own pain and this is how they react to it. Or it could be, as you said, a, a non-emotional, conscious, strategic right. maneuver. Okay, now, here goes to my gray area. If you have a player and he feels that within his ethical code, slow rolling as a tactic mm -hmm. is fine, I'm actually okay with that. I would not say to that guy, you're wrong, because I do believe each of us has our own ethical code, whether we want to or not, and everyone is entitled to work within their ethical code. So here's my counterpoint. Tommy basically says, if you emotionlessly say, I'm going to slow roll this guy because I know it'll tilt him mm -hmm. and he'll dump more money under the table, 
to me, that's a very slippery slope. Oh, it, because oh, yeah. once we head down that slope, mm -hmm. it means that everybody is looking for everybody else's emotional weaknesses mm -hmm. to tilt them and cause yeah. them extra pain. It's, it's kind of the Tony G approach. Well, that creating emotional tilt is part of my strategy. And that is an absolutely viable strategy. That's why a lot of the table talk happens. And, and the best example is showing a bluff. Right. No one would ever say it's unethical to show a bluff. But it's the same thing. You are taking action on purpose to try to agitate your opponent. Let's say that you have the Tony G attitude that tilting people is just another weapon in my arsenal of strategies. Right, right. Now suppose five people at the table are doing it and all they're mm. doing is looking for everybody else's buttons to push. Right. That is going to be the most miserable, oh, that's... unenjoyable really? in my world. <laughs> <Sounds fun. laughs> in my world, I'm going to get up and leave. Oh wow. I think most recreational poker players feel that way to yeah. some degree. If you're a pro, it's kind of whatever. But if you're a recreational person and you're down there to get away from the stresses and anger and conflict that's in life, mm -hmm. the last thing you want to experience is five guys trying to create as much anger and conflict as they can. So if you're not familiar with an angle, it turns out that poker has this giant landmass of ethically gray behavior. Right. And it's so large that we gave it a name called the angle. Yeah. And there's a giant catalog, and I guess we've seen them all. Well, right when we think we've seen them yeah. all, somebody <laughs> will come up with no, a they new They keep one. inventing new ones. Right. Yeah. But basically, it's the idea that you're doing something that is in a legal or rule gray area. Yeah. That will give you an edge at the table. Right. So a classic one would be where you play out of turn, knowing that your action won't count. Right. But everybody else at the table can't unsee what you just did. For the most part, almost everybody is an ethical player. I mean, right. you really don't see that many people trying to get away with stuff. Right. You know, fortunately. And yeah. then, but that is one of the wonderful things about our game. It is a self-policing environment for yes. the most part. Mm -hmm. And we all do a good job. And almost all games are run smoothly and ethical almost all the time. And that's because almost all players are yes. ethical almost all the time. Right. To some degree, live poker counts on basically everybody at the table bringing their best ethical self. It does. To the game. By the way, Kenny, what made you decide against going through with... Um shall I put this? Pee-wee's Big Adventure? <laughs> yeah, if everybody was trying to get away with something, it would just be... The whole thing would work. collapse. Right. To that point, it's important for each of us individually to do our part, yes. bring our best ethical self to the game. Yes. And that way, live poker thrives and grows and everybody has a good time. Let's talk about when something does go wrong mm -hmm. and either there's cheating or the dealer makes a mistake. Do you right. speak up or do you not speak up? Yeah. And Tommy and I have very interesting opinions about that. Yeah, well, quite different opinions mm -hmm. yeah. and actions. You go first. You know, as with all these things, I've, I've changed a great deal over the years. There was a long period when I was grinding every day, lucky chances are to choke Joe's, and I was almost like a floor man assistant. You know, mm -hmm. I was watching every bet of every hand. If the dealer made a $5 mistake, I would say something. Mm -hmm. If I did jump in, people trusted me. Well, then I moved into the mum poker zone mm -hmm. and then I became where I became dependent on people like you to, <laughs> to do the work that I used to do. And now I, it's really, really rare that I, that I get involved. Mm -hmm. Like, you know, I see a mistake or whatever. But we can break this into a couple categories. One is dealer's mistakes where there's, there's a mistake with the money. Mm -hmm. And I think you and I would agree on that. If we see the pot being shoved to the wrong player or the pot should have been split three ways and it was only split two ways, 
and we we're gonna we're gonna say hey 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 right exactly yes right and that's all you got to do is like point your finger and the dealer will be like right. oh okay and then yes and the dealer is appreciates it the yeah dealer doesn't want to push the part right. wrong right and if you say oh hey look he had a one card straight the right. dealer's like oh, whew, thank you yeah and nobody's gonna mind no. about that now where it really gets dicey is when you step into a, a conflict between two other people Right. The player seat three is accusing seat five of doing something, mm -hmm. and you know what happened. You saw the whole thing. You know exactly what the rule is. You know exactly what the answer yes. is. Don't don't jump in. <laughs> I don't jump in there, but mm -hmm. you do, right? I don't. I don't. Wow, this Sorry. is tough. <laughs> I don't. I don't jump in. Okay. But for instance, there's a some probability all hell breaks loose. Floorman gets called, yeah, and he listens to the dealer, right, and then he says to me or to the table in general, right, what happened? In that case, <sighs> I probably would say something, and so, so for the good of the game, if you will, okay, I feel obliged to be the emergency backup floor guy who just happened to be watching right. the game. The question is, should I jump in or not? Should I speak up or not? Mm -hmm. But Lee and I are kind of on the opposite sides. I believe in you have a right to mean, remain silent. You know, if I see an error, I don't feel obligated to speak up. Mm -hmm. Do you feel that other people, if they see an error, are obligated to speak up? I guess if a monetary error where I see a pot being pushed wrong or stacks being counted down wrong to a degree that it really matters, Right. If it's a $200 difference in a $700 pot, I think it's worth saying something. Just, okay. again, for the good of the game. No, but my question is, so you're advising the world that they should, are they morally obligated no. to speak up? That's no, the question. they're not morally obligated okay. to speak up. But actually, to use your phrase, I don't think it's ever wrong to speak up. Right. But it's also never wrong to not speak up. That's the beauty of this. I see nothing. I know nothing. And the ones where it's just a clear cut, all the information is there, it's a mistake. Those are the ones where people are least likely to get upset about. Right. Because people do want the money to end up in the right stack, yes. generally. Mm -hmm. It's the other ones where someone did a rule infraction mm -hmm. that you know about. You know, like let's say somebody um, bets out of turn. Right. And you're like, and you watch it, and you're like, oh, I'm not quite sure if he did that on purpose or not. Right. And then he does it again an hour later. Now you're sure. Right. This is the type of situation that I'm thinking of when I'm saying you're not obligated to speak up. It's dangerous to speak up, but it's kind of okay if you do, but it's risky. I will stand for you. No, enough. One man has already died for me. That's a perfect example and honestly i probably wouldn't speak up like, <laughs> look he's right? turning red because i think he would <laughs> no 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 i really I, I really the old lee certainly the 20 year old girl, okay okay the, see, the lee no. of 1998 100 would have spoken right up. there we go the 2019 2020 right. lee probably see, and, wouldn't speak up and that if anything is getting back to the whole point here is that this stuff is so gray that we change Right. You know, I mean, one person can have different ethical codes at different points of their lives. That just shows you how hazy the whole thing is. Here's what Lee and I think you should take to the casino. 